Four wheel drive recovery is done differently across the world. Now I've been watching Matt from Winder Towing do recoveries with recovery ropes for quite a, well, a good year or so and it's always intrigued me because I've never used one. I've always tended to use a snatch strap like we do in Australia. So this video is all about recovery ropes versus snatch straps. But I really want to delve into Matt's wealth of knowledge about recovery ropes. Here at Mad Matt Fall Drive, I'm all about educating and building the four wheel drive community so we can wheel well. I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so you can get those notifications as well. So Matt, as I just said there, mate, in Australia, snatch straps, we call them grab the snatchy. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's pretty much the go-to recovery piece of equipment. Unfortunately, I disagree with that as a principle because they are inherently dangerous just due to oftentimes people not using them correctly. But I've been watching your channels and you know, I will have a link down below in the description to Matt's channel and you should get over there and subscribe. You've been using, um, I think your version's the, the Yankum rope. Yeah. This is the Factor 55. Yeah, they're comparable. Yeah, recovery rope. Mm -hmm. I, I really want to understand how you use them why you use them and that sort of stuff. So can you just talk to me initially a little bit about like a recovery rope? Well, I, I was introduced to recovery ropes, the kinetic energy, that's what they were, they were introduced to me as a kinetic energy rope by Casey Lofthouse. Mm -hmm. He has his own YouTube channel too. We'll link that down below as well. But uh, so I, I didn't even know the snatch straps existed. So this this is my first recovery rope that I that I used. Okay. That I, there was a learning curve with them. I did actually break two of these um, early on. So what? Just because they weren't strong enough? Or? They no, because they had been subject to abuse that should have taken them out of service. Okay. So uh, one of the most common ways that these get damaged, I for in my line of work, is somebody running over them while you're pulling them and that stops the wheel on top of the rope and skids them right across the ground. So that would be like you're doing a recovery, the guy gets out of the bogging situation, stays on the power, drives over the top of the rope. Yep. Right, okay. And if it happens on on sand, you're, you'll probably be okay, but if it happens on gravel or pavement, the rope's done in a second or less than yeah. a second. Yeah, right. Okay. And those ropes should be taken out. And I, like I said, there was a learning curve. There was no manual. There's not a lot of information on how to use these on the internet, especially 10, 10 15 years ago. You, everybody was just trying to figure these out, and that's where I was. So, yeah, see, because in Australia, a snatch strap to be sold in Australia has to meet a, a bunch of requirements. We've actually got legislation around the design of them and the use of them, but you don't have that here in the US? Um, probably not as stringent. Okay. Um, they do have to have a rating. They do have to go through a certain amount of testing. Yep. But I think it's, I think the testing's more along the lines of so they can put the right information on the tag to protect the manufacturer, like if you go outside of these parameters. Yep. I guess that's one of the challenges is when we're doing any sort of kinetic energy re recovery, whether it be a snatch strap or a recovery rope, you don't know how much energy you're putting in there. It's, a, it's, it's all a guess. It's guesswork. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the, in Australia, it's back up about two, two meters, so what's that, about a bit over six foot, and then take off. Now, if you've got a V8 powered vehicle, you can get a fair rate of knots in yeah. that about amount of time. In your videos, this seems to be your go-to recovery device. It, it is. And I think I'm in a kind of unique situation here with all the different kinds of off-road vehicles and where people are driving them and all the rental cars that end up stuck. I could have 10 or 15 different vehicles for each specific situation that would be better, except for you can't afford to do that. You can't have that many vehicles that are specialized. Yeah. They're sitting all the time. So I've found that the kinetic energy rope is, is just my go-to, my 30-footer. Um, with the in combination with the Jeep Cherokee, it's it covers 90 to 95 percent of the jobs really good. Yep. Five percent I struggle with, but okay. it's not worth making a change. Okay. For that, uh, you know, make so, the five percent better and ruin the the 95. I didn't say this earlier, but what Matt does in his business is he's here in Utah in a place called Hurricane. He runs a towing business. He's got tow trucks and flat top or tilt trays as we call them. I think you call them something different. Rollback. Rollback trucks. Um, but what, they've got sand hollow re 
recreation area which we're in at the moment, you can come out here and go wheeling to your heart's content. Mm -hmm. And so every so often he gets calls to come out and do recoveries here and that's what his YouTube channel is really, well it's not only Sand Hollow is it? You go it's up all, in the all over the county and we actually cross county lines. We, yeah. We're always set up, we're always ready to go. So we've got a little bit of a reputation that if you call us, we'll get out there quick, we'll get you taken care of without damaging your vehicle and do it in right. a timely, affordable manner. We've got a really right. good reputation for that and that's yep. what we've been doing. The rope that I use um, has a 30% stretch factor. So it's nominally 30 feet long. So what is that, nine? It stretch out to 40 feet. Yeah, roughly 40 feet, just yep. nine foot something. Yep. And uh, and that would be under its maximum load. This one's rated at 28,000 pounds, something. give or take. Yep. Um, so that's its 28,300 pounds. So that's a pretty robust rope. This one, um, there. see this one's getting ready to be taken out right, right there. Okay, yep, it's and fraying. That's, that's road rash right there. Yep. This rope's got probably 100 poles on it. Yep. And uh, it's about re about ready to be retired. So so I'm noticing here that it's like a, a reduction in the outer sheath. So would that be possibly failing on the inside? They, I've noticed that when they're new, they're not super consistent. This is the new one. Yeah. They'll go fat and narrow it just. Uh, okay. Obviously this one, this one doesn't have any pulls on it, uh, but no. see, we're, but we're thin there, and then yeah. it's it a little thicker. Okay, there. it's just the way the yeah. the, the sheath is sitting. Okay. Yeah. So what? So so we we were just touching then on on condemning a rope. Yeah. Um, and so, see, this, some people might be concerned about that, where there's nothing wrong with this rope. This right. rope is ready to work for yeah. for a long time. Well, this is this is literally like Factor Fifty Five gave this to me. Uh, and said, try it out, Matt, and see what you think. Now, yesterday I- Oh, uh, you put this over some rocks, right? I there. pulled this over some rocks because Casey in his little Suzuki got himself into a bit of a moment. We'll, we'll, show, we'll show you <laughs> where he I can't imagine got. that. I oh, know, I can, <laughs> I met him. <laughs> He's a good so, guy. <laughs> yeah. So that's, and, that's a brand new rope, that one there. And I'm looking through, when I look at a kinetic energy rope, I'm looking at through my own lens, which is, it's my business to recover. So my ropes are used in a commercial fashion and I can't have them failing. Well, if that failed, you could damage your client's vehicle. Yeah, yep. It's possible. These, these recoil, there's gonna be a lot of energy stored in them and they break. I have broke a couple of these, like I said at the beginning with, due to um, me not taking them out of service early enough. Yep. And luckily both those times, no damage occurred at all, but you, don't you don't want to break a no you don't want to break one of these in a recovery i, I think that that's something that a lot of people aren't aware with especially with a snatch strap um this one doesn't have it but in australia the snatch strap which is an arb that i have um it's got a tag on it and it's got a service life of 10. so it means that you can do 10 hits on that snatch strap before you've got to condemn it and what i mean um what that that means is that these are a consumable item. Once they, you use them those 10 times, basically they become a solid toe strap. They don't have that elasticity. They stop being a recovery rope. That question I have is, as these get older, do they lose their elasticity? I, I haven't really noticed it. They seem to be as good at the end of their life as they are at the beginning. Okay, right. Um, they're, I don't know say about that. <laughs> I've, I've been through a lot of these ropes and I've used different brands. Um, I've, I find them all, all uh, comparable. Right. But, and that's that rock abrasion that you're talking about. Yep. This is why I like this particular brand, the Yankum rope, is because of Okay, having that, that sheath. That. Yep, I can slide this anywhere and protect the rope. Right, and that would therefore have protected my brand new, hardly used rope from that, yeah. that abrasion. I was introduced to the kinetic energy rope or the dynamic rope. There's, there's different words for them. Yeah. Yep. Um, and, and when I started my YouTube channel, everybody kept saying, calling it a snatch strap, a snatch strap, and I didn't, so I had to look up what that was. <laughs> and I was actually watching Mad Matt's channel here. He was using an ARB. And so I just bought one so that I could test it. I haven't had a chance to test it yet. 
We might um, do that shortly. Yeah, we might do that shortly here. And I'm just curious to see because a lot of the work that I do seems pretty aggressive, If, uh, uh, and, but it usually comes from people that have only ever used snatch straps. Um, if they're familiar with the kinetic energy rope, they're like, well, yeah, that's how you use them. This is probably a great recovery piece of equipment for like a weekend four-wheeler. They, they are quite a bit more affordable than these for the up, upfront purchase price. Yeah, you're, they are. In the United States, you're looking at about 60 to 65 bucks yep. for this. And I will say, buy a quality one. You can buy some real cheap ones out there. Yeah. They're dangerous. Yeah. And then a, a rope like this, you're looking at like 210 bucks. Right. But that's 10 recoveries, or I call them a hit. So you might do 10 hits in a recovery. I've seen you do multiple hits in a single yeah, recovery. Yeah, I've, so, I've done 10 hits in one job. Correct, so you could you could do a snatch strap in in, in one job, whereas this you can, you're saying hundreds. hundreds. Yeah. Right, so that, that could potentially represent far better value for money long term, although this looks like a lot more gear I've got to carry in the car. It is, it's more, <laughs> it's bulky and it's gonna, I mean, it's just gonna take up more space. I, they, they definitely don't store as nice as these do. Yeah, and I can see that getting full of mud yeah they wa <laughs> they wash pretty i mean you got to keep them clean they yes. get they get dirt in them there's there's dirt in this i haven't noticed it significantly like i've never had a rope fell from the inside out ever. okay and we work in the sand and in the mud right. i would venture to say these ropes probably live the hardest life of anybody's kinetic energy ropes that i know of <laughs> which is which is exactly why i wanted to come and talk to you matt because i you know you're, you're using them all the time yeah. In, in harsh environments. Oh, you know what would be interesting? Would you, you know, this rope's about to be condemned. It would be interesting to actually slit that and open see what's in there. and see how much sand ingress is and mud is actually built up in there. Yeah. Because in a snatch strap, what happens in the weaving when that is used and gets dirty, it becomes a friction point. So right. when that stretches out under load, if it's full of sand and grit, it can actually abraze the fibers and weaken the strap down considerably. The snatch strap doesn't stretch as much when it's wet. So when these are wet, I think the, I think the number, oh, I'm not gonna say the number off the top of my head, I, I think I'll get it wrong. But basically a snatch strap is nowhere near as effective when it's wet. Now what about the recovery rope? Is that, does that have loose I, stretch when it's wet? Once again, I haven't really noticed it. Yeah. I do know that these are, uh, they originated in the, you know, like tugboat the shipping industry yep so these are these are designed to get wet and be right. used wet what's actually in the middle of it well, like inside there is it it's rubber a, fibers it's more nylon weaving it's different than the outside the outside is a movable protection but i think the inside is where the, the actual weave that right that does most of the okay pulling is i'm uh, yeah there's I'm, i mean it's, it's hard not... to find an expert on these yeah really yeah, they're they're well. You're it now. Near. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get you a little badge, and we'll yeah. pin that on there. I'm an expert. expert. You know what an expert is. I know. Yeah, an X is a has been, and a spurt's a drip it's under pressure. Drip under pressure. <laughs> so, I've been well, there. <laughs> you know what I reckon we need to do, Matt? I reckon we've got two four wheel drives here. I reckon unless there's something else you want to talk about, I mean, we've got snatch straps, we've got hitch receivers, we can talk about all that stuff too, but I reckon we need to go out there. We'll do the right thing by you and we'll get this one bogged. Okay. And you can recover us and we'll do it with the strap, the, the Yankum rope. And then so, so I can see what that's like. Uh -huh. And then we'll give you a crack on the snatch strap. And, and I think that'll be a separate video. So we'll link that to this, the back end of this video. But what do you think? When, like, we'll just. I, I don't know what to expect with this. I know that yeah. I get recommended these a lot by people that don't know these exist. Yeah. Yep. So. Well, I think I think there's probably actually we probably need to do four recoveries now that I think about this a little more. Want to do a static? <laughs> no. <laughs> I think we need to do four recoveries, and it's it's this. Okay. We, we need to do two with the recovery ropes. One where you're being your. Passion, mm -hmm, right. being recovered and one where I'm being recovered. So because when you're doing the recovery, the dr vehicle that's doing the pull actually senses what's going on far more so. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then we'll do that with, with that. the snatch strap and, as well. And, okay. And, and then we'll just 
come back to the in a, back and we'll just tell you what we both learned and felt and experienced and think. How's that sound? I, I think that'll work good. All right, guys, I'm Mad Matt. Stay safe on the trails.